So, I have been told from like several people that they want to paint that net tutorial. Because this shit is really hard to use. And you're left with basically nothing. First, you have to actually get the thing. You go to paint, get paint.net. Download now. Press that. Free download now. There, right there. You're also going to want the bolt bait plugin. This is what I use all the time. I'm going to press that download button. You're going to have to get this after you set up paint.net. And it will give you a lot of like really unique and good features that I use all the time. And I literally forget what paint.net is without it. So like, just get that too. When you first open paint.net, you're going to see something that looks relatively like this. Right off the bat, remove these two. They just take up so much space and they really annoy me. Second, you're going to want to go to image, canvas size, or create a new canvas and pump this up because paint.net is a raster program, which means that it uses pixels instead of um, like mathematics as well as what Google Slides and Vector use, both very common. And if you make a small file, if you zoom in onto your animals or even not like that, they will become like really pixelated and blurry. And this is evident in a lot of my older artworks. Now what I end up doing, I usually like go for some giant canvas like 2000 by 2000 pixels. And while if you zoom in, you will still see some um, blurs, you won't really necessarily see that because the fish in game are really small. I always set the canvas color to like a dark gray, off white, or like a black. Uh, easier for the eyes as well as being able to make out details like dealing with just this checkerboard pattern like actually melts your eyeballs don't do that although uh for this instance i'm breaking that first rule of getting a large canvas by using my california sheephead wrasse as a base to start off i'm gonna need to start off with the rectangle so right off the bat thankfully has a rounded rectangle tool can stretch that out. I do not go all the way over as like this, because then let's say I'm slightly off like this. Um, if I use this useful flip horizontal tool, it will be sort of lopsided, and I don't necessarily want things that look like that. So I will go about a little over halfway like this. You can play with corner sizes just in case um, the rounded rectangle you're trying to fit. You just want to make it more rectangle or more like a circle. You can flip horizontal and bam, there is your thing. Um, an instance of this, for instance, I can do this with the eyes over here on this fish. I drop those colors. Use shape tool. And let's say I want, I have this eye already, but let's say I want to use that secondary color for the iris. Uh, there is a button here that you can press that will change the way it works. That's the other way around. Perfect. And changing the brush width will change just how thin or thick that outer line is like this. So for an animal about this size, you're going to want it about like here, maybe slightly larger. It's really up to you. This is your fish that you're making. And you can simply duplicate the layer flip horizontal and then to save all this room and to prevent confusing myself I will merge the layer down and I'll usually name it something simple like for instance eyes. Uh, next I consider this to be one of the most useful tools I've ever used to make any DPO fish and this is the line dash curve tool. This is pretty much your only way to making custom shapes as a there are a few other ways, such as merging like all the different normal shapes you have, but this one is just much more useful. So let's say I will want to work on this like mouth area here. What I can do, just simply uh, color drop th these initial colors that I want. And what I will do, create that new layer. Make, su make sure that everything you do is always on a separate layer because it's very annoying if you work on something realize stuff is mushed together you don't want that 
first find the perfect thickness for this. For instance, I believe this is around like an 80, maybe like 70, good enough. You can round these edges and there's an arrow tool, although I hardly use that. I usually end up with the rounded or for sides that are hidden, I'll just go with the standard. And there, and then there are two kinds of ways. There's spline, there's bezier, and they each uh, determine a, like how the line will move. So spline is generally like a much more reactive to things, and I don't end up using this one. I end up using bezier, which creates much more rounded, um, much more rounded sort of like uh, smoother patterns which are much more common on a DPO fish, so I end up using this all the time. So let me reverse all this, go back to that basic line, switch to Bezier, and what I only want to do, I only want to go about halfway. And the reason why I go halfway is because simply next what I can do is use a rectangle select tool. I want to move the select pixels over, cut that, duplicate layer, flip horizontal, and bam, you have somewhat of a mouth. If there's something like this that happens, you simply delete, you can undo your work, go a little bit further, and then just trial and error until it looks better. For instance, I'm not a huge fan of that. I will go further, duplicate, try again. That looks better to me, so I'll stick with that. Next, I want to do the back part of the teeth. This can just be done with a paintbrush tool because it will all be covered up with another layer, which will be that sort of like white chin. Go back to this, get that off white, go here, and sometimes what I can do, you can just hide layers in order to see what's behind it, and I need to do that here in order to make this mouth. So using that curve tool again to try and do uh, this sort of style and go something like that and then before you know it that bottom part with the ugly paintbrush smear doesn't even matter because it's hidden under that back layer and lastly I believe I used this tool the dome for the teeth set that to white create a new layer again and something like this I believe is how I did it duplicate flip perfect that is like 90% of all DPO art right there that just duplicate and flip just to make sure that it's symmetrical on both sides and as you can notice there are like some fi smaller finer details like I have this chin here how I made that so first I take this off white then I'll take a slightly darker color and saturate it slightly because saturation is a bit more interesting than just making it darker I will usually go on the highest layer I can I'll create even a new one I will use the line tool, I, albeit I don't need it this thick. I will go about like half of that, 35, like this, and then layer it with another curve tool like this and round those edges out so it looks more like this. I can duplicate that layer, see if it looks good. Looks good enough from afar, so I will keep it that way. Body patterns can be done in the exact same fashion that I have done. You take any colors that you choose, for instance I'll choose this because that is present on my fish and it looks like I used a rounded rectangle tool, a wrong layer, oops. I want to do it slightly above that, go like this, it looks something like that. I can zoom in, make sure that it's perfectly like that. And unfortunately, that's not the way how my fish looks, actually. What I can do is either use that um, move selected pixel tool, move it down to a place I like, and then cover it up with another layer with another design that I will do later. Or I can simply just use another rounded rectangle. It can get very busy with all these tabs, but if you know what you're doing and you actually label them, unlike what I do, because I just never grew up doing that, you can create like a nice looking pattern like that. So how do I make some design like what you're seeing here? Use the paintbrush tool. How do I make something like this that curves around, is tapers at that edge and sort of goes upwards and gets thicker around where that mouth uh, shows up? 
and it's all just about layers and using like that line tool that I showed earlier. What I can do is wrong layer. I can go to this, make that transparent so I can see what's under that. I will then choose those two colors on this here fish, which is two down. It was this and this color. So how I am work that, get that new layer, always really simple. You get that line tool. It's kind of hard to do that here because of the thing under. Curve it up like that, something like this. And what I can do is what I did here. I will take another one, also line it up, and just do my best to make it look like it tapers and it's like a single one as best as I can while giving it something like that. Or what I could have done is go like this and cover it up like that and make a similar design. And like I showed before, for anything going off the edge like this, move select the pixels, go like that. Done, done, and done. There is part of that fish there. And for now, I can finish up the chin because that looks like something I can do really quick. Go here. Find which layer it is in. Sometimes it can be very difficult if you're using with very small things. Go here. Get that rounded rectangle going like this. Wait. It is very difficult to play around with this, so I want it to be under that layer. Create that new layer. Goes. It looks something like this, to the best of my knowledge, something like that. Corner size, that's crazy. Go to like 10. It's around there, play it that little more. And you got yourself that. Duplicate, flip, and you're done with that already. How the hell did I make this fin? It requires a few other tricks that I have not gone over in this thing yet, but they are very simple. So first I'll take those colors as always, looks like that. And for this, it looks most like I used a line tool. And I will do it, I'll just do it over here. I'll do it on that topmost layer so it can be seen over everything using that line tool to sort of create that edge that I want like that comes down you may have to use multiple lines but that's okay create something like that work that edge out so it looks a bit more like it doesn't just end and start have a new line begin use that use a paintbrush tool to fill it all in make sure your tolerance is high if it's low and you zoom in you'll notice that there is a thin bridge over you uh, colored in and the line and that's because there are these small pixels right here that aren't exactly the red that you chose and it will create that line because it's trying to find any color any full space and if it's not that like complete full color it won't do that so I'm gonna bump it up to like a good 70 it's different every time sometimes you may need a higher number sometimes you might need a lower number it just depends on what you need after that, I most likely use that an ellipse select to try and um, get that small circle like this. And now for those colors, I used a trick that I actually like discovered recently. I'll take these two colors. What I will do is first of all overlap them with that line tool again. It doesn't really matter how thick it is, really, and how far it goes out because I will do something else. Let's say I want to do something like this. What I do now, I will use the magic wand, select this, move these selected pixels so it's selected. I go to this layer with the two lines, copy and paste that, create a new layer, and duplicate. And now it's selected everything in the area that I want. So if I want to move this, bam, it's like magic. It's instantly just like wrapped around that tool. And I did the same thing with the thin lines on that fin. That looks like I used a, a black, made it transparent, and I used that several times. For what I will do is if I want to do it like for a group of objects, instead of like boring yourself out and 
creating a new layer, doing that every time. Do it in a single layer. Do it multiple times, however many times you want. It really doesn't matter. Um, then you'll want to duplicate that. Add that new layer, delete, and bam, you got whatever fin, whatever design you want on that object, and that is incredibly useful. There is another way to do something similar like that, where let's say I have a bright blue rectangle, and I want to get an edge that is sort of goes like that. But I don't. I didn't use that line tool. What I can then use is I use that line tool. I can curve out, carve out what I don't want, something like this. Fill that area in with a paintbrush tool or paint bucket. Excuse me. Use the magic wand on this tool. Go to this previous layer. I will set the opacity to zero, so that selected area will become transparent under that. I delete this and now I got that perfect curve. I have used that sometimes for animals with trickier designs or I can use that for an effect like this, although sometimes I find doing that is easier. An important part is finding all kinds of like unique designs to do. I always love experimenting with new designs and like things to try on an animal. For instance, for the belly of my sheep head wrasse, I use this pattern I've never quite used before. I always love using these circles. I will recreate that here really quick. So it's above this red right here and it's up below all of that. So the layers already fix that for me. So it will always appear below that. Looks like I have something like this. Go like that. Duplicate all that. Anything that doesn't need to be seen doesn't matter. For instance, like for instance I don't really care what's over there because I will cover it up with some purple later. Duplicate that. Merge these two layers down. Paint bucket to fill in that area. And then that space tool to go up like this. And it looks like to make those designs I used the shape tool. I played around with that. Found some sort of thickness that looks for this size like 20. Go like that. And then went ham. Stuff like that. Crazy. Wild. I don't care. Sweet. And this looks a little bit more difficult, what I did down here, with that uh, bumping pattern. But it's probably nothing you couldn't do. I'd probably go something like this. Move upwards like that. And do that again. And sometimes these patterns are so small, and if you spend enough time on them, it doesn't really matter that you did it twice and didn't like copy and paste something. So it looks like it goes down and outwards. We'll obviously just cut that off. And, ooh, that's ugly. What did I do there? I accidentally had that same layer down. Once that's fixed, it's fine. Here it doesn't necessarily matter. Let's say I erase all of this. It doesn't matter because it's going to be on the other side and it will not show up like that. Bam. At the moment, that's like everything I can think of for a tutorial. So like, or for now at least, there's one last thing that I want to cover but doesn't involve this animal. But uh, I can just finish this up real quick. Is that though, if you don't mind. Next is uh, colors, yeah. Very important for any animal, and it's sort of tricky in paint.net. Paint now the easiest thing, also you can all see how many layers I can have for like a single animal. Oh, this is one of the hardest animals I've made in a very long time. First you want to delete that. You'll probably want to just merge all, first of all you could just simply just merge all the layers, put a background against it just for a little bit of contrast, and then just play around with adjustments. 
hue saturation, you can play with all kinds of things. I wouldn't necessarily recommend this because like it's sort of like unreliable. Like I made my Goonch catfish in the end brown, but if I moved it over to the brown, you'll notice it doesn't translate very well uh, compared to the brown that I chose. So undo all that. Normally how I go about changing things, I will go to that same thing, hue, dash saturation, and play around with a color until I like it. So let's say I don't want to make a brown one. I want to make that albino yellow goonch that I've seen like pictures of online. It's hype. Uh, I'll try my best to find a perfect shade. It's like that yellow. Actually, nah, that's bad. I'll choose a different color other than light blue. Let's use, let's make a navy. Let's make a darker blue goonch catfish. That sounds sick. Now what sucks about this program is because it got all these layers, you're going to have to change anything that you're going to want to do, want to be, to that like navy color, which is really unfortunate. So let's say a uh, little whiskers. No, you have to specifically like find those things and change that color. For instance, I'll go through here, go through here. Um, it can be a very lengthy process. So I'm going to just speed it up a little bit. All right, I pretty much give up trying to find whatever layer the hell these uh, three lines are to make the fins like that darker stripe. Doesn't matter the point, but the point is it is sort of difficult to change all the layers of a color. And even then, if you like mess up, like for instance, like this, not the end of the world, an option you can do is if you're changing colors after you've made an animal, let's say I want to get that color of the goonch back, so let me type in goonch, uh, find a paint.net file, go here, find whichever layer it is, thankfully this time I actually saved it, I can use the lasso select, select all that I want back in that layer, and it will only save that layer, so if I copy and paste, bring it to this other canvas, go back to this, what is it called, gut? over here, bam, it's back to normal. And being able to choose colors that go well together is another important thing. Let's say instead of this off yellow, I feel like a good, more paler white would look better. But you don't wanna go completely white cause that can like blind somebody. But like a better, more, not quite there, quite not like all white, but an off white could be really good. And if I use that on all of the other things, I may not want to do the whiskers, but for instance, like the actual meat. And um, where is that layer? God damn it. I'm so... It's somewhere here. But if I change um, this right there to that white, as well as the fins I can do now, because I at least know where that is. Um change that to that same white, it could end up like making a creature look so much better, which is really important because it's all about presentation in this game. Yeah, Harmony Guild can do whatever, but people really care about the art. And that is really all I have for this tutorial. I appreciate you watching and I hope to see more people use paint on it in the future. One final thing I almost uh, forgot about. Um, Let's say Another, like, sort of annoying thing about Pinot, know, let's say you want to make, like, a cool-ass design, like, here. Like, let's say I want to give it, like, a, like, a, let's say I want to give it, like, a smooch or something. And I want to give it, like, a little something like that. Because yeah, it's a very beautiful fish. I'm very proud of this animal. I give it a, a cute uh, smooch mark like that. Uh, let's say I want to make those lines thicker. I can't do that at all. Like, there's no way to do that. So, if you ever, like, make a design or something and you realize it's not the way you want, you gotta end up deleting the layer and then uh, trying again. Which kind of sucks, but, I mean, that's life. It's not the end of the world. Ever. And, I mean, let me just finish doing this. And I'm, uh... Got my prized boy. I'll give him a couple more because I think it would like that. Like that or something like that. Yeah, 